All right, my guest today on In The Now Podcast on the Radio Random Network is a Los Angeles-based singer-songwriting duo here to talk about their debut EP, Falling Again, Miss Heather St. Marie and Matt Dawzant. I did it, didn't I? <laughs> you got it, Dozant. Dozant. Close enough. Yep. How are you guys doing today? We are great. Doing good. That's awesome. That's awesome. So you we was before before we started we were talking, you guys actually met at uh Louisiana Tech, correct? You're both from Louisiana. That's true. Yeah, we are. We're southerners. We love it. And that's where we got all of our love for music. You uh, know, everybody in Louisiana is really creative. Yes indeed, that's what I was about to say. You guys how much of that uh Louisiana mu- influence uh influences your music? Quite a bit, you know, and, and I would say, honestly, looking back, you know, Matt and I started a rock band up in Ruston, and I think because we were in Louisiana, kind of isolated from, you know, the, like New Orleans has its own scene, Baton Rouge has its own scene, up in the north has its own, you know, it's not like here in L.A. where there's thousands of bands and everybody's kind of influencing each other, so we were able to kind of develop a sound and a writing style that was unique to the two of us. And, you know, that helped us a lot, I think, because when we came out to L.A., it's like we're still realizing that we don't really sound like anything that's out there. And we embrace that. I think that's a strength rather than, you know, sound like out here. You know, we'd laugh. We, we moved out here and we had a rehearsal space. You know, it's just like a big um, warehouse full of rooms. And all these bands are in there and you could hear each other. And a hit would come on the radio and all the bands started sounding like that. And then the next kind of trend would happen, and then all the bands started sounding like that. And so we just kind of made sure we kept to our roots, you know, which are coming directly from being from Louisiana. Now, you were talking about the scene in New Orleans and the scene in Baton Rouge. And, I mean, I, I would imagine being from here, you guys have you played all of them. But versus the scene in, in Los Angeles is sometimes down here, there's so many talented and creative musicians that, that sometimes the scene gets saturated. Do you guys find the same, uh, I guess, challenge in Los Angeles? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely, it, it, it can be saturated, but, you know, again, like we just kind of, we do our thing and we don't really pay attention to, you know, whatever everybody else is doing. So uh, I guess it's, it's worked out for us. We've always kind of, when we play here in LA, it's always kind of been, a pretty big event, um, and we, we don't play out here all that often either, so that, that could be part of that. We, we kind of focus, we didn't really focus on Los Angeles so much because those aren't what we consider your your CD buyers, um, so we focus on, you know, um, the South, uh, the East Coast, and Midwest sort of thing, um, so when we play here, it, it's you know, we won't probably only play here like two or three times a year, so it's kind of a, a big event. So it's always kind of worked out for us, and um, you know, our shows are, are usually pretty good here. How how much do you guys actually play? Quite a bit. Um, the, you know, a lot. Yeah, we do. You know, when we we've been talking about doing this acoustic um, thing for like a while, and finally, you know, Matt produces other artists, and he had an artist. Um, she was having a big CD debut, you know, release party thing. And she's like, I need someone to open. Do you guys want to do it? And we said, yeah, it's probably the opportunity. We might as well take advantage of it. And it just launched us out into two years of pretty solid touring. Um, pretty much we'd go out for a few weeks, come back for two or three weeks, and then go right back out again. And um, that suits us just fine. I mean, we love being on the road. If I can not unpack my suitcase, I'd be happy. <laughs> <laughs> yes indeed now i mean how did you guys get to los angeles from louisiana and we talked a while ago i, I mentioned you, you you guys had uh, met up at louisiana tech but how how did it how did the road lead to the west coast well we were we were playing shows out here uh, when we were living in ruston um with, with our band we would go we were just you know we were just kids we had uh it was very low overhead and had pretty decent jobs, making pretty good money. So we just put all that money on coming out here and playing shows, just as we wanted to do. Um, and so it, it was, yeah, you know, the band was, it was a college band. So as college bands do, and 
people graduate, they move on, kind of fell apart. Um, but Heather and I were just not, not ready to give up on, you know, music. And so we tried, uh, for a while to put the band back together in Russia. And, you know, we had built a little bit of a following. So there were, there were definitely people that were, um, uh, you know, elsewhere in the U.S. that were interested in joining the band, but nobody was really willing to relocate to Russia. Um, they just didn't have enough, you know, I guess going on. And so, uh, we, we just, we knew we had to make a, a bold decision. We were either going to go to, I, I guess, New York or, or LA or, or Nashville to, yeah, I don't even know if Nashville was in the picture at the time, but just somewhere where the, it was close to the music industry so we could really, um, give this thing a go. And so uh, we decided to do that. It was, uh, 2002 we moved out here. Pretty interesting. Now, you guys, you, you, on top of everything else, you guys are are, are songwriters, and yeah. uh, you yeah. you've actually had your songs. Uh, your, one of your songs was actually uh, featured in one of the uh, the Saw trilogies, correct? Yeah, that was kind of our the band big break. Okay, uh, we because uh, Heather and I was. There's a big story to it. Like when, I, when we first moved out here, when I moved out here, we're, we're going to put our band together. Moved out here, I got immediately scooped up by the Osborns, Osborne camp. I, I um, played lead guitar for Kelly Osborne. Um, so I was already like right when we hit the soil here. Um, it I, within three weeks, I was touring the world with Kelly, and uh, so Heather was here trying to put the band together, and she and I were writing. Uh, back and forth, I would you know, email her um, some ideas. She emailed me some ideas, and so we were still working remotely. Um, as the Kelly thing, as the Kelly thing was kind of like we were, we were going pretty strong for a couple of years, and it, as it was winding down, um, Ted and I put uh, the band. We put, um, you know, we, we got some guys. We put the band together, and um, we actually signed a, a deal with a, a major label. And, um, worked, it, that, that was a year kind of almost wasted <laughs> as far as progress goes. Um, we, we didn't really, we didn't like that experience. So we kind of dissolved that whole thing. And then she and I, um, wrote a song. We had, we, we had a song in Saw 2. Um, and that happened because the, Main character in the Saw films, the, the female character, Shawnee Smith, was a, a fan and, and friend of ours. And she was bringing some of the Saw people to our show. And, uh, um, so we had a song in Saw 2, and that kind of got bumped, um, by a bigger band and kind of a political thing. And then when Saw 3 came around, they asked us to write a song specifically for the film. And they kind of gave us a little bit of a, a, a brief, of what was going on in the film. And so we wrote Killer Inside for Saw 3, and that landed in the film. It was the only, the only song in the whole film. And, um, and on the, and we were on the soundtrack. And so that kind of launched our band out there. So, you know, our, you know, our first show with that was with Static X and, um, and in Vegas for the premiere. And that launched us out on tour which was supposed to be, for us, we thought it was a three-week tour, and uh, we kept getting um, asked to, you know, be booked elsewhere, and we actually ended up staying out for nine solid months on the road. That kind of launched us out there in a pretty big way, and, and it was very fortunate that we were able to do that because that now, you know, we kind of paid, paid our dues when the fuel prices were cheaper, and so now uh, does that same where you can go out to those same markets and and there will be you know we'll have a draw. So it's that's worked out really well for us. Right now, Matt, you were you you had said you had went on the road with Kelly Osborne, uh, who is the daughter of yeah. uh, Ozzy Osborne. Uh, but how how did that take place? I mean, how did you was there was it like an audition or is that something that you uh, you, you kind of uh, already knew somebody? I mean, how how did you land that gig? Well. Yeah, uh, <laughs> another long story. I'll try to abbreviate, but um, so 
as I said, we, Heather and I, you know, with the, our band, we would come out here to L.A. to play shows. Um, we were playing at the Whiskey one night. Um, some guys from the band Lent Biscuit came out to the show. Um, and I guess remembered me because at the time I had short spiky, you know, hair and goatee and kind of looked similar to the guitar player that they had at the time. And so when that guy quit the band, they did a, um, a big search. They got involved with Guitar Center and did a nationwide search for a guitar player. But they, I guess they remembered, maybe remembered me, and they hired a guy here that is, uh, that's his job. He puts bands together. He's a musician referral guy. Hmm. And so he puts together all the big bands. Um, that's just, he's, he's the guy. So they hired him to find me. He somehow found me uh, in Ruston, Louisiana. Uh, they called me and flew me out here. Um, and I, the, whenever, um, they threw me out, the management somehow screwed up the date and gave the band that weekend off. <laughs> so I flew out here and didn't, and, and I actually wasn't really, I wasn't really into that band. Um, I was kind of pushed. My, my, my dad was like, look, this, you know, opportunity, you gotta go and call me into it. And so I was like, I'm not here to do it. The band would get a week to the band weekend off, so um, I didn't even meet the band at all. Um, so we back home, and they called later. You know, uh, apologized, wanted to um, you know fly me back out, and I was like, nah, I'm not really, I'm not really interested. At the time, my my heart was in you know the band that I was right, in. Right. So um, as my heart wasn't into it, and that whole thing just kind of like just didn't this didn't feel right. So I was like, you know what, guys, I don't want to waste anybody's time. But the musician referral guy couldn't quite uh, grasp that I didn't live in L.A. Um, I guess in his notes, you know, I was kind of at the forefront of his list. So he would get, you know, artists all the time. I mean, he would just call, hey, I got, you know, Macy Gray is uh, auditioning. He'd be here tomorrow at this time. I'm like, no, I, you know, I don't, I don't live there. And this went on for a little while uh, until we decided to move out here and so when we did that that was like you know a pack to you know loaded up the apartment with you know all my boxes and stuff and i called him up and said hey i'm here whatever audition you got i'll come out you know because it's you know it's been so many times he's called i'm like let me, let me just go out and do an audition so he can just see what i'm about and whatever and he's like uh, that was on a monday he's like yeah we got kelly osborne on thursday cool. so you know went down and I didn't even really think that I was like the guy for Kelly Osborne. Um, but, uh, you know, so I just, I just wanted to go out and just audition. I was auditioning for this music, musician referral guy. Just, you know, just right. to meet him. Went down and nailed it. And so, you know, my first show here was the uh, Tonight Show with Jay Leno. So. That was that's pretty uh, interesting. That's, I mean, it's a chance that not a lot of people get. And you had you had also said you know, you guys were signed with a major label. Now, whenever you were signed, and this is I guess a question for both of y'all, as far as your creativity and, and you know you, writing the songwriting, I mean that's your emotions coming out of you. You pretty much just putting it on paper. Did you do you got did you guys feel like that you were kind of trapped in a way? Where, where, how much creative control did you actually have uh, of your own material? Well, that's exactly why we hated working with the major label. Um, you know, it um, it was a nine-month process. They started out, they said, okay, you know, let's just go ahead and first record these five songs, see if you guys work well with this producer. And this was a producer from a band that, you know, was huge influence for us. He'd done great things. We were so excited. And then we'd go in, and they'd say, like, you know, just record a demo version in your studio and bring it in. So we'd do that and we'd bring it in and the A&R guy would sit and meet with me and say, well, maybe I'm hearing a solo here. I'm like, really? Okay. And I'd go back to the band and tell them that. And we'd have to rewrite the bridge to work in a solo. We'd re-record it, bring it back in, and he'd say, maybe I meant like a one-beat call. And I'm thinking, this guy doesn't even know how to play an instrument. He doesn't know anything about music. And he's telling us what he feels he, you know, wants to hear. And then we finally got past all that and we start working with the producer and, you know, he's telling us, you know, telling me how to sing in a way that's really not 
everyone who's seen me sing, I've got a really good voice. I'm right. loud. I'm really, you know, I mean, I'm Cajun. What are you going to do, you know? And he'd be like, sing softer. Just sing quieter and softer and smoother. Trust me, it's going to work. And, you know, it just was like, really? You know, it's not me. So in the end, like nine months later, we finally had like four songs. I mean, it was just painfully slow. Painfully slow. And we got them back and we're like, we don't like any of these. <laughs> None of them. I mean, I didn't even want to give them to my mom, you know, and she's like one of the biggest fans, you know. I mean, of course, she loved anything I do, and I didn't want to give them to her. So, yeah, it was over the Christmas holidays, you know, and meanwhile, you know, there's a whole lot of other stuff in there, a lot of mind games, that, you know. The, the politics were just stupid, you know, like they'd ask questions to, you know, look at Matt, and so be me being a nice Southern girl, I'm just, you know, biding my time, waiting for him to answer. And then they're like, well, she doesn't really have what it takes to be a star. She didn't, like, jump in there. And I'm like, really? So I've got to be that annoying person who takes over every conversation <laughs> just for you to think I've got it? Right, this right. Is stupid. Yeah, so, you know, it was the Christmas holidays, and they're, like, handing this contract. They're ready to do the album, and they're just so excited, and they're telling me I'm going to be the next Britney Spears meets Pink. And I'm like, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and that was just like, you know, I'm not happy with any of this. I'm miserable. Is this why we moved out here? And we just both have said, you know, let's walk away from it. And we let the contract lapse, and we've been happy ever since. Because mm -hmm. we're able to write music that we want to make, you know. And that's important to us, why we moved to California, you know, to be an artist, to be musicians, you know, to make music that maybe one day, 50 years after I'm gone, somebody's going to find it, and it's going to mean something to them, you know, and not some kind of just mess that just makes a quick buck, and that's it, you know. Yes, so, yeah, that, that's why. <laughs> that's what it's all about. I mean, it, especially, I mean, you get those people sometimes, though. They don't know nothing about music, and they come in, and they try to run it, and they tell you, you know, it, it's almost like a, a, a bad Saturday Night Live skit. And uh, what is it? Will Ferrell comes <laughs> in. It's like he's hollering, we need yeah. more cowbell, yeah. David. You know? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yes, yeah, and, and, you know, some people, that's what they want. I mean, it's just different career paths. You know, I, I say those are entertainers, and they have their place in, in life. You know, they, they entertain us and they're willing to, you know, play whatever someone tells them to play or sing or listen to or whatever. You know, the world needs that kind of entertainment, I guess. But a different path to take is, you know, when you're looking at making music. And that's what we've always been about. And that's kind of, you know, what our this album is. You know, it's falling again. You know, it's about relationships. You know, that we've all been there. I mean, you you know, learning, when, when you're learning and growing, you usually end up falling for the wrong person or the wrong thing even. And how do you get that out of your life and find something that's good? You know, and that's the kind of stuff that a label would never let us write. Right. You know, a time slips away is about our life on the road. You know, that, that kind of, you know, sentimentality has no place in, you know, the pop business world of music that we're it's happy to bring and put it out there. Yes, exactly. <laughs> that's not sexy enough for <laughs> what? And that's what sells, you know. Yeah, uh, we we yeah we definitely dealt with that, but yeah, we're we're much happier doing this on our own, and um, that when we we did the uh, the Killer Inside for Saw Three, that was the first step on our own. Um, we we let everything dissolve, and. Um, and that was, you know, that's what came to us um, when we let it all dissolve. We were kind of, uh, you know, it was a bit of our, our lowest moment sort of scenario, and that opportunity came up. So it was kind of cool. Yes, indeed. Now, Heather, when, I mean, they said you were going to be the next Britney Spears meets Pink, which, I mean, apparently that's something you <laughs> that you don't want to be, you know, you want to be yourself, but... It, as far as your influences, uh, who are some of the, the, the people that uh, I guess you looked up to or has influenced your uh, your vocal stylings? You know, I, I pull from so many different places. Um, you know, um, anyone with a large, big voice who sings with passion. I mean, when I remember my mom was a child of the 60s, you know, and she, we'd watch old, like, CBS documentaries and she'd show me Woodstock and things, you know, and I'm like, Oh my gosh, when I saw Janis Joplin, you know, I mean, she was feeling every note and that's what like made a mark on me. When, you know, even like when I'd watch Freddie Mercury in Queen and he is just the biggest showman and feeling everything and, and those notes are just coming from his soul. That's really what influenced me. 
you know, um, just being loving the music and living the music and being that music. I think that's, you know, those are some influences for me. Definitely like Heart. And then in my own era, you know, Alice and Kings, that's who I mentioned earlier, like a huge, huge influence for both our rock band and I think our acoustic. You know, the, the, the tight, tight vocal harmonies, you know, and the melodies behind everything. You know, that they're, they're a really big influence for us. So, you know, just power, I think, powerful things. That's really where I'm pulling from. Now, the new album, um, Falling Again, it, it, that's uh, that's something that you guys, this is a, a, a joint thing. You guys, uh, you co-wrote all the songs pretty much? and Yes. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, she and I are pretty much the songwriting team, ha- have been for this whole thing. Um, you know, with the band and everything, we're, we're kind of, it's the same, same deal and it's the same process. We, we always, even with the rock band, we mostly write, it's just she and I with an acoustic guitar. So it's really just kind of an extension of that. Um, a lot of the songs we had written, some, some of them we've written along the way, um, and they just weren't Hyderabad songs. And so, you know, the, the initial idea behind this was the, those that same break would be an outlet for those songs that just weren't, you know, weren't Hyderabad songs just so they could see the light of day. Um, but then, you know, we ended up writing a lot of stuff specifically for those that same break. And that's what kind of came to the forefront. And that's, that's mostly what's on this album. Now, take us a little bit, uh, give us a little insight on any, uh, what kind of ritual, is there any ritual, rituals or, um, I guess, what, what, what inspires you to write? I mean, is, are you, you guys, are y'all the types that could just like, like that, you can put words to paper and make a song, or is it something that's, it's gotta be, uh, I guess, an emotional connection, pretty much? I think both. You know, each song kind of is like its own little living thing. You know, they're kind of like our little children, if you will. Right. Some of them come really easily. You know, some of them, like, sinking down, Matt had gotten, this was, that was one of those that we wrote actually with Hyderabad while we were doing Hyderabad. He'd gotten a new guitar amp. We we're hanging out in the studio one night. He's just playing a riff over and over again to kind of tweak his amp and get the settings like he wanted and play with it. And it just kind of clicked with me. And I said, hey, wait, keep playing that. And within 20 minutes, I mean, I had all the verses written and part of the chorus. You know, it just, it connected. And I think, again, I was homesick. It was kind of early in our, you know, moving here. And it does kind of, for me, I was thinking about South Louisiana and the things I missed about it. So there was like an emotional moment for me and it just kind of came. Other songs, we sat down and said, okay, you know, we need to write. And those, you know, songs you end up laboring over for months. You know, you put it away for a while and you come back and you're just not quite there yet. You know, and so you kind of have to let those develop as they do. But I think we've always decided to put the song first and treat it like its own thing, you know, and that seems to work. If you try to force an agenda on art, it rarely comes out to you. I agree with that. I definitely agree with that. Now, before I let you guys go, is there any advice you can give to any up-and-coming musicians or songwriters that maybe want to follow in, in the footsteps? Stay true to your art. I think is the yeah. biggest thing. Stay true to yourself. Stay true to your art. Um, there's a lot of, uh, I mean, there's, there's a lot of distraction. It's a, it's a weird, it's a weird industry. I mean, it's, and it's a tough industry. It's really hard to uh, to get anybody to notice because there's so many distractions um, out there. But yeah, I would definitely say, you know, as long as you stay true to your art and stay true to yourself, and you'll do fine. Um, we also what tell people. What measures? Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I, cut, I thought you were done. <laughs> go. Well, I was just going to say, you know, we, we do love to help other bands. And what we like to tell them also is have a backup plan. You know, it's kind of funny to say, but I'm a computer programmer and graphic designer during the day. You know, but when you have other ways of having some money, then you're not making decisions based on desperation. Because if we were desperate, we would have taken that record deal. And, you know, life would have been different, and, but we wouldn't have had the, the, the um, pride that we have in the, writing the songs that we wanted to write and doing it on our terms, you know, because we would have made decisions out of desperation. So we tell people, you know, save your money, you know, have a backup plan or some other means so that you're not making these decisions and, you know, 
based on that, you're able to really, like Mary said, it kind of goes hand in hand. Then you're able to be true to yourself and who you are and what you want to be. Awesome. Awesome. The name of the debut EP is Falling Again. You can get it at iTunes or at Amazon. And you can also go to the website. Plug the website real quick for me, Miss Heather, if you don't mind. Yeah, it's hard to spell. we got those French, Louisiana French names. But it's dozatstmarie.com. It's D-A-U-Z-A-T-S-T-M-A-R-I-E.com. And we check all the emails. We take care of all the website stuff. So that's the most direct way to reach us. We've got shirts and CDs up there, and we'll always have our tour dates. We come through Louisiana a whole lot. I think we're going to be there kicking off Cinco de Mayo in about a week and a half in Thibodeau, Louisiana. We'd love to come back home. So keep an eye out for us and uh, come check it out and say hi. Definitely. I want to thank you guys for joining me, Matt and Heather. And, uh, again, go visit the website. They're going to be in Thibodeau, Louisiana for Cinco de Mayo. Uh, They're on social media as well. Go to the website, check the tour dates. And Sounds good, Russell. You. Thanks so much for having us. All right, thank you guys, and we'll talk to you soon. All right, have a good one, man. You too. Bye.